today I have an album of Zeppelin commemorative covers. Uh, this came from one of the Atfil Bomb collections I purchased, and um, it came this, um, dare I say, like heavy duty binder. It's very sturdy and strong um, metal. So, anyways, none of these are actual Zeppelin covers. Uh, these should just be commemorating the Zeppelins. So, let's take a look here and see what we got. Not the cleanest pages in this binder. I think uh, at some point I'll figure out what to do with this. Either I'll sell all this stuff or um, keep it and probably transfer it into something else. Let's see what we got first. So a Spanish, oh god, what do they call these? Exhibition sheets, I think. Um, so I can't read a, a lick of that. And yeah. this is a another sheet, which is also Spanish. Or wait, no, German, maybe. <laughs> Brief market. It looks um, that looks German. I have a whole bunch of these exhibition sheets. I actually have. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to say maybe one to two hundred of them, and um, I actually try to include those in my grab bags when I sell them. At least one per bag is kind of my thing. So a whole bunch of blank pages. So we'll get up here a little. These are old pages too. They're wrinkled. And, oh, the plastic's a little bit harder than usual. So this is Corn Pex. <clears throat> Let's see. Bloomington, Illinois. 79. Los Angeles, Tokyo, Friedrich Schaefen, and Lakehurst. Huh. So that was it for that. Uh, it does look like he has or whoever had this. I always say that. Say, looks like he has. I'm in my head I'm referring to whoever owned this <laughs> album before. So he had, or she had, uh, another one of these. So there's a duplicate. Looks like next up. Dan Danapex, 79, Madison, Wisconsin. Commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Grass Zeppelin Round the World flight. This one has a pretty common 15 cent flag stamp on it. That's a cool cancel. A lot of these cancels are going to have Zeppelins on them. So, moving on, what's, what's next? I haven't even looked at this binder for uh, six months or something. I have no idea what's in here anymore. A bunch of uh, Zeppelin covers, that's all I can say. 50th anniversary around the world flight with a Will Rogers stamp. 79. This one's Brookfield, Illinois. And it's it looks like it's sent from the Aerophilatelic Federation of the Americas in Brookfield. To Walnut Creek, California. Cool. Nice little cover. I'll keep it like this. Oh. Ugh. God, that page is gross. <laughs> I didn't even throw that out. Hold on. <laughs> We're gonna toss that thing. I don't know what the story is on this, but it looks like somebody blew their nose in it. <sighs> Let's get that out of here. <sighs> All right, that's better. I feel cleaner already. So, um, looks like a cover here. Fiftieth anniversary. First Pan American flight, or Europe, first Europe Pan American. I don't know what the UND is. Flight Pan American round. Maybe that was UND round. I don't know. This blocks it off. The 50th anniversary UPEX 80, 1980 station, May 4th. Euclid, Ohio, Zeppelin issue. So they got a nice Pan American commemorative ink stamp on this, uh, or cancellation on this. Uh, 
architecture stamp. Okay, interesting. So what do we got here? issuance of Graf Zeppelin stamps. This was also at Euclid, Ohio. It says only 61,296 of this value, this $2.60 stamp, uh, you got a Zeppelin stamp, were sold. Defining the maximum number of sets once issued. Today there are less, making complete sets most valuable. This looks like a duplicate. Oh, actually, it has different uh, different wording here. It said issued on use for issue, sorry issued for use on mail matter carried on the first Europe Pan American round trip. So that must be what that's been cut off round trip. Makes sense. Flight of the Graf Zeppelin, May 1930, issued at Washington D.C. Cool. Go, go, go. Oh man, this was also a sticky page. Ugh. Better. So, Jer. Jer. M. Pex. Is that right? Yeah, Jer M. Pex. 80. L. Cajon, California. This is El Cajon Station. Uh, it's kind of blurry, but August. 31st, 1980, I think. Quote cool coral reef stamp. Commemorative 50th anniversary of the first South American flight of the Graf Zeppelin LZ 127. So here's the next one. First Europe Pan American round flight. 50th anniversary, another coral reef, same as the other one. That was the same exact stamp, as a matter of fact. And they're showing the 50, uh, 65 cent graph uh, Zeppelin stamp. It says the stamp paid postage on a card by steamer to Germany and from Germany to South America by Graf Zeppelin. Steamer to Germany? And then Germany to South America by Graf Zeppelin. That's really cool. I had no idea. I have, of course, all these Zeppelin stamps. And so well, that's that's pretty neat. On to the next page here. Carrying on with our coral stamps. And there's another one after this. So another uh, Pan American round uh, round fight. 50th anniversary. The buck 30 denomination Graf Zeppelin. So this value paid postage on letters by steamer to Friedrichshafen, a uh, Friedrichshafen, sorry, Germany, and from there via the airship to South America. So I guess that stamp actually shows the Graf Zeppelin sailing westward. Nice stamp as well. There's another. This is the highest denomination of the three, $2.60. It says this value paid for letters going the full route by steamer to Germany and by airship to South America, thence to Lakers. I love that, the vents. Nobody uses that anymore. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, cool. Another coral stamp, pretty neat. <laughs> Move on to the next and thence to the one after that. Let's see what we got. Oh god, yeah, some of these pages gross me out. They're so sticky. Okay, well, let's look at this one. Okay, it's mm, Cyrillic or what? Mongolia. Okay, uh, so just Mongolian, I guess. Uh, it's a Supex station. November 15, 1980, Brookfield, Illinois. It's one of those um, uh, stamped envelopes. Pretty cool. Um, this is an actual photograph, looks like. It's definitely been pasted on. You can feel the edge of it and see it. 
So, um, this is an airmail stamp on here. Mongolia airmail 30 whatever their, their money is. Dutch loop post. So it's commemorating. So Mongolian, listen, oh, it says Polar Flight 1931 to 81. So Mongolia released a stamp commemorating the Polar Flight of the Zeppelins. Okay, uh, next up, it's upside down. This guy. Alrighty. Supex Station. Sorry for the shaky camera, as always, guys. Sorry. Right. So, um, Supex 80 salutes the 50th anniversary of the United States Graf Zeppelin issue. So it's been years. This is at the Suburban Collectors Club of Chicago, Brookfield, Illinois. Whoever owned this may have frequented there. That would explain why the majority of these seem to be Brookfield, Illinois. Supex Station, November 15, 1980. Another Zeppelin cancel here. The ink stamp and then the flag stamp. Pretty, pretty common. I guess I completely lost my place flipping this binder around like that. Started moving backwards. Oopsie. So anyways, here is the next one. 1931 50th anniversary. This is a mid post post you know, airmail. It has a really gentle uh, light ink stamp at the top here. The word says Drucksack D-R-U-C-K-S-A-C-H-E that's just faintly printed there. So some German stamps. Oh my gosh, this is, I have been so into my US Mystic albums, I have to think now, I'm like, Dutch Bundepost, that's West Germany, right? <laughs> what was the, uh, oh, East Germany was the DDR. Okay, okay, yeah, so West Germany, <clears throat> Dutch Bundepost, Phyllis Salon, so he was commemorating, like, you know, Graf Zeppelin Flight 1931. This was, was like November 15th, 81, when this was stamped at Stuttgart. Stuttgart 1. Oh, it's a 50th anniversary commemorative. A couple of cool stamps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see what we got next. So. Supex 82, 50th anniversary, Graf Zeppelin, 1932 South American flights, commemorative cover. This one is the Suburban Collectors Club at LaGrange, Countryside, Illinois. Maybe it's LaGrange. Uh, Supex Station, October 1782, flag stamp. There's a nice uh, cache, Graf Zeppelin. Obviously flying to these locations or something. On to the next cover. Miami Beach Stamp Expo 83. January 28th, 1983, Miami Beach, Florida. Very nice looking cache. Statue of Liberty. Miss Liberty was began to be built in 1881. It was a gift to America by France in 1884. It was unveiled in 1886. Hmm. This actually is pretty cool looking. Century of Progress Exposition. Cancel here. It says dispatched from Miami. And a Dr. Mary Walker, Army Surgeon, Medal of Honor recipient stamp. Oh, these are pretty nice looking. So, let's see here. 
So it's commemorating the Graf Zeppelin flight over the Century of Progress from 1933. This is the 50th anniversary of the World's Fair flight. And this cachet is from Compex 83, Kennedy Rosemont, Holiday Inn, in Chicago, Illinois. It was held June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Pretty cool. It's got the Zeppelin flying ab above. We have a similar cover here. Um, they oh, oh, wow, they're consecutive days, matter of fact. So that was the 3rd. This is June 4th. Same place. Oh, right. This was a three-day expo, according to the information on the cache. So it looks like this uh, person was at all three days. They got a nice different color for each day. That's pretty cool looking. I actually like that. Different colors, beautiful. Uh, they're kind of toning, I think, on the edges a little bit, whatever. Oh, okay. Let's look at this first. Here is another German, uh, this looks like a postcard with a Zeppelin commemorative uh, cancel. September 10th, 83, or no wait, the, no, the 9th of October, 83, I'm sorry. So 50th, I think Jar's year. So that's the 50th year uh, commemorative, 50 year commemorative. Maury Kaufman. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. An actual postcard, that one. So. Uh, okay, so this is another German. Stamp is an 83 stamp. This looks like this is all, yeah, all of these actually have the same, on this page, have the same uh, October 9th stamp. This one shows the different ink stamps. So, Luf Post Drucksach again. I don't know if I'm saying that right, probably not. Maybe Drucksack. So, this is weird. Um, it's got the address crossed off. It has a retour on it. Uh, this one is nearly the same as the last one, except it has this Century of Progress stamp. The other one didn't have that. Interesting, the retour as well. I think somebody actually did mail this. Wow. Um, that's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think any of these are real Zeppelin covers. Obviously, it's 83, so no, this was not a Zeppelin, but... Um, I don't know. I didn't think any of them actually got mailed. Huh, so that's a weird-looking one. A lot going on there. Oh, wow. You know, so they did get mailed. So here is the back of the postcard, and it says... Chicago, Illinois, 1983, AMF O'Hare, and uh, well, I'm assuming they got mailed, sorry guys, it's actually kind of early and I'm not the expert with these, I think it got mailed, October 11th, all of these, yeah, October 11th, this one actually has some, let's look, it says please return to sender, sorry, please return to sender, Albert E. Schmidt. West Germany. So that means that they tried to. So, uh, I don't know. That is weird. I'm not quite sure I understand that, but it looks like they actually, this one for sure was attempted to be mailed, and I think the other ones maybe. Anyways, moving on. So, this is the next page, it does have another postcard. Murray Kaufman in Peabody, Massachusetts by airmail. The IL 
LA 83 International Expo or whatever. 50 year commemorative. Pretty similar to that other page. This has 50th anniversary stamp, Mo Mohex. Station October 2883 from the American Air Mail Society in New Jersey. Okay. And this is, I guess, is that just a letter? No, that's the thing behind it. So, a uh, little postcard here 50th anniversary, Robert Morrison. So, on the back here, similar ink stamp to the last one, or CDS. So, uh, on the back, there's another Robert Morrison, Morris, sorry, Robert Morris. Supex Station, Countryside, Illinois, 83, and yeah, Century of Progress Flight Commemorative. This guy has a German stamp, five cent, 50 year Chicago flight commemorative. They're all pretty similar. <laughs> okay, next is this one. So, um, another German Zeppelin commemorative. This one's 84. translate all this but uh, I'm not gonna bother they're commemorating Zeppelin flights <laughs> I know that much huh so uh, a couple of kind of interesting little postcards this is Nice picture of a Zeppelin flying over overhead. This is 86 now. We seem to be getting more recent. The further we go on this album. Nice little vertical pair there. And then we have um <coughs> wow, this is 75 here. Where's the other one? The other one doesn't say. So this is a seven, sorry. I was looking to see if this one was a 50 or 75. Doesn't seem to say on that one, but this one does. A 75 jar. I don't know if I'm saying that right, 75 year. So this is May 7th, 86. Three years before I was born. And the next page has another one. Nice picture of the Zeppelin of both uh, mountains. May 10. This actually has a nice picture. It looks like England or something. And there's no Zeppelin on there on that picture, but it does have the Zeppelin ink stamps. It uh, cancels. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, one more here. This one's Spanish. 50 Enos, 50 years. Uh, I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. So. <laughs> Uh, Brazil stamp. When was this? 26-12-86. Santa Cruz, RJ. December of 86. First day of circulation. For, probably first flight. Commemorative 50 year. Neato. Okay, then we got some random like, pages in the middle of Cool, so these are nice. Uh, cell cache covers. I have a whole book of these. I might nab these out of here and put them in there. 1936 Hindenburg. We are all familiar, so these are all the Hindenburg. Mm, 
Friedrich Schaffen, Friedrich Schaffen, four three seventy six, really seventy six. Well, wow. these are older, so they're all pretty cool looking, nice, very nice silk cashews. There it is, hanging out at the, in front of the hangar. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those Zeppelin hangers, but they are massive. Let's read the information here. It says Hindenburg, Frankfurt to Lakehurst, flight number 10. Okay, so that's the 40th anniversary. Hindenburg, Frankfurt to Lakehurst, flight number 10, same. And then this one says. March 4th, 1936, the German airship Hindenburg made its first flight over Friedrichshafen, in Germany. Okay, so that one's commemorating the first flight. Those are nice. Cool. So, <coughs> this is a bunch of covers from Brookfield, Illinois. Go figure. Commercial Aviation Stamps, 1976, commemorating the Hindenburg flights of 1936, ZFX-76 station. So they're all pretty similar. This one says third day. Oh yeah, they're consecutive days once again, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Someone was a heck of a Zeppelin enthusiast, whoever made this, that's for sure. I definitely like these Zeppelin commemoratives. <laughs> Hindenburg disaster, 40th anniversary. Lakehurst Naval Air Station, May 6, 77. It says the giant doors of the Lakehurst hangar opened once but once opened to welcome the Queen of the Skies, LZ-129, also known as the Hinton Bird. Here's our next one. These are both silk, uh, silk cachets. This is uh, Lakehurst, New Jersey. Yeah. Once again, the Naval Air Station 77. <coughs> it says, 40 years later, the site of the shocking disaster is a weed-covered field, no longer the home of the giants of the skies. What a shame. That was a disaster. Lots of innocent people died there in a horrible fashion. I think we don't have Zeppelins flying around, and rightfully so. Okay, um, first day, cover. Really, 130, I don't know, Frank, Franks, Franco. <laughs> Sir Roland Hill stamp. And, uh, well, nice picture of the Hindenburg. Hmm. These are pretty interesting. I, I still don't know what to do with these. I guess I'm gonna keep it. I can't, I can't seem to give these up even though they're not real Zeppelin covers. And I like them. Uh, so, the Zeppelin Collectors Club 4th Annual Exhibition has a cache of Max Pruss, the commander of the Hindenburg. This is May 6, 1937, 6.20 p.m. Lakehurst, New Jersey, the Zeppelin explodes. The Hindenburg final flight Cancel here. Oh man, it's blowing up. Ugh. Oh, boom. What the heck? <laughs> it's kind of messed up. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a commemorative and it happened. Um, September 29th, 1977. I'm not laughing at the tragedy. I just can't believe that the, that the cancel shows it blowing up like that. What the heck? Am I dreaming? <laughs> That's what the cancel, they chose that? <laughs> all right, um, uh, all right, so uh, same cancel again. 
Uh -huh, here we go again. Okay, yeah, so the other one was the 29th. This is the 30th. And then um, this next one is actually uh, October 1st. So let's read these. <coughs> Another from the fourth annual exhibition. Charles E. Rosendahl, Vice Admiral, 1892 to 1977. Navigator on Shenandoah, Commander of Los Angeles and Akron, Lakehurst Naval Air Station, Commander, Chief of Eastern Blimp Fleet. Okay, this is a different guy, it looks kind of similar, but different. Ernst A. Lehman, Zeppelin captain, disaster victim, and memory of those who lost their lives at Lakehurst. So it looks like, that looks like actual handwriting to me. Robert Sunios? Huh, I'm not sure who that is. Anyways. We have a first day cover, official cache, United Nations headquarters of the Hindenburg disaster. It's the 40th, uh, 40 year anniversary. Anniversary. This is the what is it? Graham Beck's uh, the Exploring Stamps channel on YouTube. Uh, his favorite Christmas stamp. I also like that stamp. It's, it's a nice stamp. Um, New York, November 19th, 1977. So this is the United Nations National Postage Stamp Show in 77. Okay. Canada Postage Stamp Show. 77 also. Post well, it says Canada Post. It says Postage Stamp Show in New York. <laughs> so it's in the big Coliseum in New York. Yeah. Oh. All right. Whoopsie. Whoa, take it easy here. <laughs> so, we have the stamp collecting stamp, stamp on a stamp, and Hamburg disaster 77. So, it must be a 40 year, 40 year anniversary. Christmas stamp it says John something. There's a tiny little stick on cache. It looks like a sticker. The 130th anniversary of US postage stamps. It says 1847 to 70, 1977. Baker Local Post. Here's the first two stamps ever released in the US number one and number two. Which I'm still working on putting in my album. I wish there was more and they were less expensive. <laughs> Alright, so PFA Sweden. I'm gonna guess Philatelic Foundation, Philatelic something association. I don't know. Uh, does it actually say? No. Maybe it's Philatelic Founders. I'm not sure. November 16, 20. ASDA, American Stamp Dealers Association. Work for your anniversary of the Hindenburg disaster. Disaster. This is uh, another one. Uh, oh, this was the one that was at the uh, Coliseum. There's a nice stamp on the back. <coughs> okay, so this is what is this? A a postcard from Portugal. Yeah. So this would be the 17th day of like the probably philatelic exhibition in Portugal. Uh, I can't read any of that. 86. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Alright. This guy. Six, 12th of December or 12th of October, I think. A German stamp. 
Oh, it's actually kind of a cool picture of the, the city. Oh, there's another stamp. There's two stamps. Three ink stamps. Moving on. And this is going to be... This is the front of that postcard, it looks like. Yeah, 17th day, Portugal. So it's a printed picture of a real cover, registered mail cover. See, Deutsch Luft Post, this would be what, it, this is probably a real cover. Portugal stamp. But then uh, that might be the actual um, real legitimate stamp for a or a Zeppelin cancel. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me move this stuff on my desk. I'm trying to flip this big binder around and keep hitting all this stuff. There we go. Right. So Hindenburg uh, Silk Cache, Colorado Silk Cache, 50th anniversary. Sus, Susk Pax Station. Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. 50 year transatlantic flight. Nice Liberty stamp. So, commemorative postcard from 87 with the Sinclair Lewis stamp. It says 50 years ago, the world was stunned at the sight of the largest Zeppelin bursting into flames as it approached a landing at Lakehurst, New Jersey, May 6, 1937. A total of 36 lives lost in a seconds. This is a memorial reprint by Picture Postcard Center. So let's see what these are all about here. The Hindenburg Disaster, Calupex 87. This says, ew, gross, big hair. Oh! That's cool. Alright, so, uh, yeah, what was this, when Zeppelin became a dinosaur, this is Calumet Stamp Club, Hammond, Indiana, okay, next one, 50th anniversary, boom! Same, similar, same day, actually same stamp, that is pretty much the same except for the uh, cache being different. Hmm. So let's uh, move on here. So I've got a few of these to show you. So that must be the, what, the, what were they saying, sorry. A memorial, a memorial reprint on the back here. Said, so, okay, so yeah. It uh, says, on board the Hindenburg, this card was carried on the Hindenburg on its initial flight from Friedrichshafen to Lakehurst, New Jersey. It is mailed to you with the compliments of the Tide Water Oil Company, whose product was selected to lubricate the giant ship. Really? Tide water? Of course, I was thinking of the laundry detergent Tide, but I guess Tide Water Oil Company is completely different. I was like, dang, Tide was involved with the Zeppelins? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so this is a 87 UPEC station, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, commemorative cover, 50 years of the crash of the Hindenburg. Nice ice boat stamp. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> F 
Florida Federation of Stamp Clubs presents Stampery 87, Palm Beach Shores, Florida. Stampery Station. Remember the 50th, 50th anniversary of uh, the Hindenburg crash at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station 87. Pretty cool. I like it. It's a pretty cover. Okay, here we have one another from 87. Excuse me, commemorating the final flight. The Hindenburg. Let's see what was on the back of those. United Nations Stampery, Palm Beach Shores, Florida. Oh, cool. It says flown aboard the Goodyear Airship Enterprise. May 14th, 87. Wow, so this is this one was on a blimp. How about that? That's cool. Uh, that's probably the coolest one so far. The fact that I actually flew in an airship uh, kind of helps. And uh, the fact that it's something similar, even though it's not a Zeppelin, it's a blimp. That's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to be keeping that one for sure. <clears throat> so here we have the Hindenburg Disaster 50th Anniversary from 87 at the same Lakehurst Naval Air Station. It says the Hindenburg, over 800 feet in length and with a speed of 80 miles an hour, had made 10 round trips between Germany and the United States. While landing at Lakehurst, New Jersey, it suddenly caught fire and was totally destroyed. The commander, Captain Ernst Lehmann, and 35 other persons aboard died in the disaster. <clears throat> mm. It's funny to look through this. I've had this for so long now. Oh wow, okay, so a <laughs> little Nazi symbol. Um, same, same air station. Ooh. Arthur R. Bink. Jersey, 50th anniversary. The Hindenburg enters eternity. Jesus, kind of depressing, guys. God dang. <laughs> it was a disaster. Um, okay. Uh, Here we Memorium, the memoriam of uh, 50 years of the Hindenburg. Oh crap, I didn't understand, I'm sorry. It actually exploded at the Naval Air Station. Oh man. So that makes all of these commemorative covers being from the Lakehurst Naval Station quite appropriate to commemorate the Hindenburg. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, these were all canceled where the actual disaster happened, son of a gun. So May 6, 87. This would have probably, this is a recreation of a real actual Nazi air symbol for the uh, Zeppelins. Interesting stuff. Okay, moving on, we've got, let's start with that. <coughs> 1985, Bopec Station, Shenandoah Memorial. Okay, that's an 82, well this card is an 82 card, but this is an 85 cancel. What do we got here? Okay, so this is a, a silk cache, once again, it has a nice Mariner 10 stamp. It says AVA Ohio, so AVA Ohio, September 3rd, 75. This is Shenandoah, looks like it's crashed, it says the USS Shenandoah following weather conditions of unusual severity broke up in the air at Ava, Ohio. 14 crewmen were killed. 29 survived the crash. Could you imagine crashing on a freaking Zeppelin? Oh my god. That must have that must have been the freaking most insane crazy experience those people had ever gone through. My goodness. So this is a nice, uh, looks like a lithograph postcard. 
Oh no, it's got the, um, oh gosh, I forget the name of it. I don't think it's lithographed, it's something else. Um, I forgot the name. Anyways, postcard. Admiral Farragut Academy on Tom's River in Pine Beach, New Jersey. That postcard is unused and is blank. It says Admiral Farragut Academy, America's first preparatory school with naval training. Enjoys highest Navy Department rating, fully accredited. Its cadets are prepared for entrance to all colleges and government academies. Grades are from 6 to 12. Program also stresses all sports, band, individualized guidance program. Oh, all sports, band, individualized guidance program. A large fleet of boats for naval training. Okay, so a silk cover. Sorry, still, still more. more stuff in the way here. Okay. <clears throat> so, 50th anniversary. ZR3 or the LZ126 built a free built a free Drick Schaefer. What? Is this just improper English? Built a free Dick Schaefer. Germany, yeah, so that must be a typo. In 1924, for the U.S. Navy, later renamed the Los Angeles, it flew from Friedrichshafen, Germany, on October 12, 1924, and arrived at Lakehurst, New Jersey, on October 15, 1924. Three day flight. It's a 74 silk and shade. So, this next one says, Zephex 1, 1974 in Brookfield, Illinois, CR3, the maiden flight, left Friedrichshafen on October 12, 24, arrived 1524. sponsored by the Zeppelin Collectors Club in Brookfield, Illinois, at our Lakehurst Naval Station, nice Skylab stamp, what do we got like so? <coughs> Zepex 74, Brooklyn, Illinois, 50th anniversary, CR3 to America. I don't think I've ever seen this stamp. This stamp posted to visit USA Bus and Tenny Layer. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen that stamp. Huh. Another one at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station, 50th anniversary. ZR3, built at Friedrichshafen, in Germany for the US Navy. First test flight, August 27, 1924. It says it was, the length is 658 feet. <coughs> and four inches, I guess. Diameter 90 feet and eight inches. Left Friedrichshafen, in Germany, the 12th of 24, arrived in Lakehurst on the 15th, 24. Cool. So, there we go. 1975, Zepex, Brookfield, Illinois. Honoring the flight of the USS Los Angeles to Bermuda and return February 20, 21st, 1925. And the second flight on April 21st, 24th, inaugurating the first flight, the first airmail to Bermuda. Huh. Another one from the Zeppelin Collectors Club. I like it. Where we go? Cool. Alright, so. What is this? United States Postal Service, Central Regional Office in Illinois, official business. Uh, has an American bicentennial thing uh, stamped there. Sent to Dr. Perm C. Null. It's pretty similar to actually that last one, 1925, Los Angeles. This one's actually official mail, though. There's a penalty for messing with it. There's a couple of covers in here. Let me pull 
things out, I guess. Take a look at them. Alrighty. So, 1975, Puerto Rico Day, honoring the flight of USS Los Angeles to Puerto Rico. That's weird. So it's got a Zeppelin above a ship. I mean, I was wondering, it says the flight <laughs> of the USS Los Angeles. Well, I've never heard of a ship, a seafaring ship that can fly. But I guess it appears it was accompanied by a Zeppelin. That's weird. Okay. Cool. On the back, this cover is the product of Hi-Fi Press. Ponydale Ave in Chicago, Illinois. Huh. Okay, so here's a similar one with the same stamp, uh, like stamped in the same series um, as the last one. And this one is uh, on the flight of Los Angeles da, 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 in 1995. <coughs> yeah, I guess the USS Los Angeles is. Airship. I'm sorry, guys. I, I just thought the USS indicated a ship. Um, I guess I didn't know that. It could also indicate a flying ship. Uh, perhaps. I could be wrong, but it seems to be the case. <coughs> so, this one's by the Zeppelin Stamp Club. Okay. Same, uh, same stamp on the back. This is <coughs> Chicago Pex CPS 81, the 95th annual national exhibition. The 2nd through the 4th in October of 81. This is so LZ 126 in flight. Hmm, this is pretty cool. Exploring the moon stamp, and it has a space shuttle. <laughs> and a Zeppelin. Cancel. That's cool. I like it. So, Chicago Phil Talk Society seal on the back. Neato. Alrighty, so it's going to be a postcard from 64 next. Uh, it says it's a souvenir postcard of the second rigid airship, the Akron. Akron. Comes to you from the annual exhibition of the Rubber City Stamp Club in Akron, Ohio. Okay, well, it must be Akron, not Akron. It says this dirigible built in 1931 was 785 feet long at a helium capacity 6,500,000 feet and it was designed for military purposes and included in the lower hole was a hangar deck with five scout planes on April 4th well hangar deck with five scout planes on April 4th and 33 the Akron was an it encountered a violent line squall and was lost at sea with 74 of its crew of 78. Well, let's see. Wow. Lost at sea? What the heck? You know, I had never heard of all of these Zeppelin disasters. My goodness. You know, a lot of people apparently really, really did die because of these zeppelins. What a shame. Man, I just had no idea. Holy moly. I, I mean, we've all heard of the Hindenburg, but I hadn't really heard of any other zeppelin disasters that I can think of off the top of my head. So, let me get some tongs. This is, this is actually a postcard he slipped in there. City Stamp Club in Akron, Ohio, 1964. Nice uh, stamp there. Frederick Remington, Artist of the West. And so this one also shows. Uh, is that the same? It's the same. It's the same exact picture as the last. 
Suburban Collectors Club of Chicago, 31 to 81, 50th anniversary. This will be the Philatelic Exhibition Supex 81. It also is commemorating the first flight of the USS Akron. Okay, October 17th and 18th in LaGrange. Countryside, Illinois. Hmm. I kind of like the, uh, the cancel. It's kind of like a scroll. That's cool. Let's see what is up on the back here. There it is. <clears throat> Pretty similar cover, just kind of another one. A different stamp, I guess. Mm, no. <laughs> it's a duplicate, it's the same exact cover. Okay, so. guys got these pages from this this plastic on these pages is it is so thick man it's surprising heavy duty pages here so USS Macon station 15th anniversary uh, Moffett Field Station Moffett Field 1933 1983 so 50 year this is George Washington stamped twice. This is Macon, Georgia. This is an 83. Uh, yeah, interesting that this blue one is totally upside down. Ah, okay. Now it looks a little bit less like a Pokemon or something, and it looks like an actual Zeppelin. This is an airplane here. This must just be the Zeppelin hangar. Wonder what I was looking at. Okay, so here we have Farm Pex <laughs> 83, honoring the 50th anniversary of the Grand Zeppelin Century Progress flight over from the Wolverine Stamp Club station. It's kind of hard to read. What does it say? Something, something, I just don't know. Something height? Uh, I can't quite tell that, sorry. Anyway. Washington DC. 82. 50th anniversary. What do they do here? They, <laughs> what are they doing? So this, I think that what this is, is this is an actual first day cover. And... Then they went and got it stamped over at the uh, stamp show. Interesting, so kind of a double whammy cover I think is what's going on here. Because the only way it got this 82 cancel was to be in DC in 82 and then later on I guess he took the same first day cover and went to the, uh, the Macon stamp show and got these stamps on it. We're at the Farm Pex 83, I mean uh, wow, that's pretty cool. So, somebody had some thought involved in this. I can understand. That's why two stamps. I see. April. Hold on. Okay, so that means that this is probably the same. It must have just slipped by me. April 12th, 83. And this is March 11th and 12th, 83. So he got this at the stamp show first, and then went over to Moffett Field, or, um, and got that over at the Moffett Field Station. Wow! So these are both actually pretty neat covers. What the heck? I didn't catch on to that prior to uh, looking at this uh, this time. Yeah, I, this is probably the second, only the second time I've actually looked through this, so no, I, I missed that. Okay, so it looks like the final thing is going to just be this postcard here. And it has a canceled flood the USS Macon November 433. This was at Sunbeck Station in Sunnydale, California. 
Robert Morris 81 postcard. Neato. Okay. So, hope you guys enjoyed. That was it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just talk about totally random binder that I have here. Um, I This is just one of many binders that I, I still haven't even shown you guys from all of these collections I've purchased. Uh, but, so, yeah, this is one that just kind of hangs out on the shelf. Dang it. And, um... One thing I do like is this binder, I forget, it has these page turner tabs, these big plastic things. If the pages didn't get caught, it would just be perfect. Fortunately, they do. Now they get caught on this tab. I see, so I should have opened that up before I was turning the pages. Always learning, right? But yeah, anyway, I like these quite a bit. I was thinking about buying some generic pack of these. Uh, keep in my albums it just makes turning all the pages easy there's one at the front and one at the back so you can just skip all the way um, to the front or back see but anyways that was it hope you guys enjoyed that was cool to look at kind of a longer video than I expected I guess um, but as you stuck around here to the end appreciate you watching appreciate you guys support I'll continue making videos. We'll see what'll be next week's uh, theme. I have no idea. I was actually wondering this week. I, I couldn't seem to make up my mind what I wanted to do for a video. I was like, ah, do another Kyle's Cabinets or something. And, uh, um, ended up doing this. So, take care. I'll catch you next week, guys. Bye-bye.